So everyone, it's been about 24 hours since we finally got the Delta emulator on the App Store, and there's a couple things that I still wanted to go over that weren't covered in the very first video. So firstly, I do want to correct myself in saying that it's not only US-based, it seems like the only region of the world that was fully omitted from being able to download the Delta emulator directly from the App Store was actually the EU, because I've gotten reports of people in the UK, in South America, in Mexico, in Canada, in South Africa, all these people have been able to download it directly from their own version of the App Store, but only people in the EU, unfortunately, are gonna have to go out and download the altstore.io, which maybe we'll touch on in a separate video and then be able to sideload it therein after the fact. So that is one thing to take note of when it comes to the accessibility and the availability of the Delta emulator. But now the rest of this video, I do wanna go over a couple more portions of the application itself because we did notice that the Delta emulator does emulate a few different consoles, including the Nintendo DS, but straight out of the box, you cannot actually use it. You have to download a couple files, which I'll show you, and I'll link those files down in the description as well. And also I wanna talk about and mention how to actually connect via Bluetooth a game controller and how that works inside of Delta emulator because that's always a good thing to have, especially if you are playing other games that might require or it actually gives you a better experience with a wireless game controller. I also want to mention how to actually download and customize different skins depending on what console you're using. So by default, Delta has their very own skin for every corresponding console that they support, but you can actually download a bunch of other ones from third-party sites and be able to kind of customize it to however you see fit and get different modules to make it look even more so, maybe like a Game Boy Advance SP or Game Boy Advanced. And then lastly, I do want to bring up how to actually customize each game from a cover art perspective because my OCD does sometimes does kick in if I don't have the cover art for the corresponding games and I just like everything to look kind of organized and neat. So without further ado, let's kind of go in depth into the Delta emulator and give you guys the ins and outs of everything that I've learned so far. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that you guys are able to use the Nintendo DS emulator inside of Delta because like I mentioned earlier, by default, it comes ready to go when it comes to Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games and all the other emulators. But if you just try to open up a Nintendo DS game after you've downloaded it or uploaded it from your actual physical cartridge, then it will still give you an error saying that you need the BIOS files, right? So I've already installed mine, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it because I don't know how to uninstall it to then show you how to do it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head into your settings over here in the Delta emulator application, but then you're gonna scroll all the way down to where it says core settings. Now in this core settings, I'm not exactly sure why it's needed, but it says manage settings for individual emulation cores, it says Melon DS. I'm assuming that's some sort of, you know, developer info or something like that in terms of who created this. But down here, you're going to see three different DS BIOS files. Exactly what that's needed for, I'm not 100% sure, but we were able to figure out exactly how it's done. So instead of these purple check marks that I have right here, it's going to have in red font, it's going to say required, required, and required. And you're going to download BIOS 7, BIOS 9, as well as a firmware bin. Once you have those downloaded, it's going to work the same exact way as actually downloading and installing a game into Delta Emulator. So once you're in here, then you can actually tap on here and it's going to make you look for the actual file itself. As you can see right here, I have BIOS 7, BIOS 9, and the firmware bin. And then I'm going to put that right there. It's going to give you the check mark. You're going to do that for the corresponding ones. And then you will be able to use the Nintendo DS Emulator. So when I open this up, it does show up right here. Now this is a different Nintendo DS skin. I'll show you guys how to actually get that in a second. But you can see that now I'm playing Pokemon Heart Gold and it is loading up and it's working the same way that it's working, let's say, with a Game Boy Advance or a Game Boy Color game. You get the haptic feedback, the buttons are there, the joystick works perfectly. As you can see, it moves around, which is awesome to see. So I'm going to press no info needed. And you just notice that it is touchscreen. So the bottom one, just like any other Nintendo DS, does react to touch. So if I press A here, it's reacting to the touch. Obviously, it's not going to work on the top screen because the Nintendo DS does not support top screen touch screens, at least not the ones that I use. But a regular Nintendo DS, we keep pressing this and you'll be good to go. So that is how you get the Nintendo DS emulator inside a Delta emulator to work and work correctly. And it'll work with any Nintendo DS ROM that you do own. The next piece that I do wanna show is actual custom skins. So if we get out of here and go back to our main menu, go back to our settings, if you go down here, this section here is called controller skins. So down here, it gives you a nice little link to learn more of what that exactly means. And then you are taken to this Delta emulator website to give you the actual access to skins. I like to go where it says Delta skins over here, and then you're able to choose between a bunch of different ones. If you want to go to Nintendo DS, you can choose whichever one you want. You can also do maybe a Game Boy Advance one. I like the Game Boy Advance ones because they're a little bit more unique, a little bit more out there. You can also go back all the way to GBA skins. 
to give you the real ones, which is the ones that I really like. So, you know, they mimic Game Boy Advance SPs and things like that. So all you have to do is, let's say we'll tap on this red one. It's going to download as a Delta skin file. I already have one downloaded, so I want to show you guys what that's like. And then the way that you add it is very simple. We'll press done here. You're going to add it the same way that you would add a game or a ROM. So you can see that we have the GBA SP black skin. We'll press open. And then nothing's going to react. So you're going to have to go into your settings after that and for each corresponding one. So you can see that I downloaded a Game Boy Advance one, and you're gonna go here and you're gonna tap on here, and that is when you get to actually decide which one you wanna use. So as you can see, I'm using the black GBA one, and it works great. So we'll go back to settings, I'll show you what that looks like. We'll go to our Game Boy Advance game, and now I'm using a Game Boy Advance SP skin to actually play something like Pokemon Red. And we'll go back to our main menu, and same thing occurs for, let's say, the Nintendo DS one, right? So if I have the Nintendo DS one, I'll tap on this. You can see that this pink one is the default one, but I did download this nice white one without the borders because that's the way that I kind of like to see it play. And then you just make sure to press save when you're done. So if I want to switch it, we'll click on this, and then it's back to the Nintendo DS standard one. So if I open up Heart Gold or Soul Silver, you can see that it's now a different skin on there. So that is how you customize your skins for each corresponding quote unquote console emulator. And now the last portion that I do want to show off is that Delta does support game controllers. So third-party game controllers, this is an Xbox One controller, it works with PlayStation controllers, I also have MFI controllers that work as well, and it's very easy to set up, and I do want to walk you guys through exactly how that actually works. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually connect your Bluetooth controller to your device itself. So you're going to go into your regular settings on your iPhone, go down to where it says Bluetooth, you know, you have your actual controller, so I'm going to turn mine on. I already have mine connected. So you can see down here that it says Xbox Wireless Controller connected. And then we're going to go into our Delta emulator. So if we go into the Delta emulator, and let's say I want to open up, you know, we're going to open up something like Pokemon Yellow. And you can now see that the skin is completely gone. The reason the skin is gone is because it's going to let me use my Xbox controller to actually play this game, which is absolutely amazing. So, and you can start to think about different use cases and scenarios of where this would work. So maybe you can airplay to a larger device, or maybe you use a, the Delta emulator with your iPad. So, you know, the sky's kind of the limit when it comes to this stuff. So you can see that I'm using the Xbox controller to actually move my guy around. I can press start to open up the menu, look at my Pokemon, which I don't have any right now. That's why it's not working. I press B move out of here. But I will say before you actually start playing, after you do connect your Xbox controller, I'm going to recommend one thing because by default, the menus are going to be mapped differently and it's going to be weird. You're not going to know exactly what each menu item does. So, so as of right now, I have it mapped. So Y takes me to the main menu. So then I'm able to escape the game or leave the game. But the way that you actually map everything, you're going to want to go to your controllers. You're going to go right here. You're going to go to customize controls. And then you're going to want to click on the console that you want. So up here is all the different consoles. You have NES, Genesis, SNES, N64, GBA. So for GBA, for instance, it'll let you map all your buttons to whatever you want. So right now, I manually mapped it. We're starting select, or the actual start and select on the controller. Y is the menu access. A is gonna be A, B is gonna be B. It's just gonna be flip-flopped on this controller. You have your trigger buttons and everything like that. But for instance, if I wanna change my start button, I'll just tap on the start button and I'll press, let's say, X. And now X is gonna be my actual start button. But I like to keep it uniform, so we'll press start again. And now it's mapped to the start one. We'll press save. And then it'll be ready to go to play exactly how you want to. And you do this with all your different consoles and all your different controllers. And it works extremely well. Again, very robust. And it's amazing that we have Delta Emulator absolutely free. So let's finish up this video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, the Delta emulator still has a bunch of other features that are kind of dug into the settings itself to make it even optimize more so for the experience of being able to play these Game Boy Advance or these Nintendo DS games right on your iPhone or even your iPad. And there is rumors that it also works on Mac OS and maybe even TVOS. So I can see a world where maybe we're playing Pokemon Yellow on your big, you know, 100 inch projector directly on your couch and things like that. So it's definitely a fun time to finally have something like this that's on the App Store, that's easy to get, that's accessible by most people. Unfortunately, in the EU, you still have to go through some hoops, but it's still 100% doable if you guys do want to check that out as well. But my favorite part is the ability to connect Xbox controllers and map it to whatever the controls I want it to be and have all that figured out. And then also being able to play it on my iPad with that game controller, this gives you a little bit more of an immersive experience. And maybe even on the Vision Pro, it could work. But that's gonna do it for this video. Again, big shout out to Riley Testa and everybody that's been watching these videos. Leave some comments down below of any questions that you have that maybe I can answer after the fact, and I'd be happy to do so. But like I mentioned, if you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.